Hey everybody, welcome back to Play the Game HQ, and welcome back to Get Better at Crokinole, a Nailed series, it. thank you, where we are trying to help you and me get better at Crokinole, because Jeremy is already really good at Crokinole. If you don't know Jeremy, this is Jeremy Tracy. He makes Tracy boards, arguably the best Crokinole boards in the world. This is not a sponsored video. He's just in town to shoot some stuff and share the love of Crokinole with me and with you. So. This is a series where we have gone through beginner, intermediate, and now into the advanced uh, techniques of Crokinole. And in this video, we're talking about controlling the board. Yes. So while we're doing this, I am going to assume that people have already watched the intermediate. Yes. And one of the tips we covered in intermediate or one of the skills we covered was the awareness of who has hammer. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about controlling the board, I am going to do so with the assumption that you already grasp and understand. Mm -hmm. And most of what I'm going to talk about applies to a situation where you are in control. Okay. You're either even in 20s and you have hammer or you're up in 20s. One of those situations is at play. So I also referenced earlier, there's an expression that comes out of pool. It's not what you get, it's what you leave. Yes. And that's what we're going to be talking about now. And so yes, we're on a lazy Susan, deal thank you. with it. Yep, lazy Susan, I'm gonna hold the board. I'm not following official rules because yeah, it's just not functional. We're, we're, we're compromising our attachment to the rules for your benefit, you're welcome. For the viewers. Yes, for the viewers. So something, I, an example I would give is that, I mean, I could do a hit and stick right here. Uh, let's say I was to knock that off, but what I would rather do if I am, if I am working the advanced skill of controlling the board, I am going to take that out. Ah, oh, wow. Advanced. Yeah. And I wanna use this peg and bring myself back on this side of the board. Basically, I want to make sure that I am giving my opponent absolutely nothing to work with. Mm. So that is an example. There's another example, and I uh, want to acknowledge straight up, I, this flies directly in the face of one of the beginner skills that we talked about, and that was get the off. Because what I'm going to say is in an advanced situation, there are times when you want to intentionally not get the off. We had talked about, uh, like if, if you and I are playing, I'm in control, I'm trying to keep play out of the middle, Mm -hmm. You're trying to get play back to the middle. Right. One of the strategies that you could use to do that and is very often used is the peel. So you would take your shot to knock mine off and yours off. So if this is the situation and I do this, you are going to shoot through here, knock mine off, knock your shooter off. You have forced me to play back to the middle. Mm -hmm. Compare that to this. It's my shot. This is your button. Right. I am going to intentionally not get the off. Because now you can come through here, you shoot, you knock mine off and you lose your shooter. I am still- You can still keep it out of the center. Yes, I want to do that and I will keep, I will do that to you all day. And this Not is, only- You're up on 20s. I'm up on 20s. So I'm you're in just control. trying to end the game ahead. Yes, I'm either up in 20s or I've got hammer. Okay. I will do that all day. Now that wasn't very good because you could shoot and intentionally hit your own hit mine and do like, a right. double peel, get rid of everything. So if I can, I'd like to get some separation mm -hmm. and not, that is an advanced strategy of controlling the board. Okay. Okay. Never would have crossed my mind to to think that far into it. Yep. And yeah, that's, that's just a, yeah. And I straight up sit like when I'm playing and like we've done a couple times, mm -hmm. we uh, like coaching yeah. as we play in a situation like that, I will do that. And then I will say, I will sit out here and I will toy with you all day long. Right. This is my paradise. Yeah. If I can get play over here and mess with you, I mean, I'm in heaven. Mm. Now that said, I need to be careful because if I do something like that, and let's say I put that over there further, then I'm making myself vulnerable because if they peel, then I've got to go over to their side of the board and, they and potentially the set you. them up. Mm. So yeah, you need to use this strategy of not getting the off only when you're in control mm -hmm. and you need to do it intelligently. With great power comes great responsibility. If you use this tool either at the wrong time or don't do it well, mm -hmm. it can bite you. Absolutely. So um, yeah, 
Another couple of examples of controlling the board, something else that uh, my oldest son is absolutely fantastic at. Some people would look at a situation like this and they go, okay, there's a, there's a potential 20 there. And yes, there is. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're up by a 20 or two and you're just more interested in controlling the board. You would hit that and ideally roll this out here. But even if you just get it there, you are controlling and not giving your opponent a very good, they, they need to make a fantastic shot to right. get a 20 off of that. But yeah, ideally what Reed is fantastic at, he gets the off and his button rolls out there and it forces you into appeal. Mm -hmm. right? And yeah, that is fantastic board control. Um, I will also, <clears throat> I talked earlier about forgettery. Mine apparently isn't very good because I remember this like it was yesterday. It was in the uh, semifinals of the London, Ontario. Oh wow, like really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I, uh, I'm guessing 2018. I was in the semifinal match against Ray Beerling, fantastic player, fantastic guy, and I made I made a couple of mistakes. The first mistake was in my head I was going because I'm pretty early in my crokinole career. I'm going, mm. holy crap! I'm about to beat Ray Beerling. I'm in control, and he had one here, and I sloppily just did a takeout because I thought I was fine. Mm. And it was in such a position that he was able to come off of that, get the off, bring his into the middle. He brought play back into the middle. Mm -hmm. Now what I would do is I would try to get that off and make sure I don't, I don't come want to out do that, that way without but I touching would, the outside. I would go that way a little bit. Can we also throw the disclaimer that I don't shoot as well when I talk while I shoot? No. But yeah, but yeah, the concept is there that I would basically I would be more diligent. I I opened the door for Ray a much. sliver. And when you're playing at that level, it open. that's all that you need. Yeah. So those little slight, just those little nuances of moving my button that way a little mm. bit. Um, delving into uh, delving into doubles play, um, you want to leave the butt, you want to be mindful of what you're leaving your opponent. You don't want to leave them an opportunity to angle in. You also don't want to leave them an opportunity to hide on your opponent. That there, there are, um, yeah, so we talk about controlling the board. There are times that I've seen- uh, And we're gonna do a whole other video on on hiding. Yes, we are. There are, uh, I have seen situations where, um, let's say my opponent is sitting there, hitting my button there is a very tough shot. Right. But there's another black button over here that would be easier for them to shoot. I have seen this partner take out this button two or three shots in a row and leave their partner over here. So the situational awareness of, okay, what am I leaving for my opponent? But also when you're playing doubles, what am I leaving for my partner? Yeah. Because it, I mean, it's not even just being a nice person or being considerate, it is being competitive. You look at your partner and go, yeah, do you want me to take care of this so you don't yeah. have to? This would be a really easy shot for me and a really hard shot for you. Yes. So. So you're, yeah, you're communicating with your partner and not only making the better shot for you, but also what are you going to leave right. them? So yeah, um, we could talk for probably another hour about controlling the board, but it's just being extremely mindful of what what are you leaving, not just what you make, but what you leave. Yeah, and uh, and where you are score wise, and whether you need, uh, and that's just in our in our games, it's kind of that like whether you actually need to score again, yep. and whether you need to score dictates whether you're actually even trying to get in the middle or pull the play out to the outside so that the other player can't get a legal shot with a score. Yep. Here's another simple example. So let's say I'm shooting red. Uh, it's my shot and I need to take out a, a black button. Some people look and go, okay, that one's worth more. I'm gonna go after the 15. But you do, oh crap, a terrible example. So you just do that. Ideally you do that. but. Let's say it was here. Let's do that. Let's make my own examples easier on myself. So, wow. Don't talk and shoot. Don't talk and shoot. Edit for me, Daniel. You just, you just want me to lay your voice over? Yep, don't talk and shoot. Don't talk and shoot. Um, but basically, the point I was trying to make is that your natural inclination might be to go after the one that's worth more. But if I had instead gone out here then my opponent is not going to have an opportunity for a double takeout. Because they're so far away. They're so far away and there's one of theirs in between. And why would they not be happy just? It, it depends on the situation, like, cause there are times in the situation that 
uh, you know, you'll hear it in doubles play where you'll say, okay, we either need a 20 or we need a double. So I, not only do I not want to set them up for a, a 20, but I want to make sure I'm not creating an opportunity for them to get a double either. Right. So it's, to, it's again, understanding the hammer, understanding the situation and being mindful. Of, okay, what happens next? If I take this one, what opportunities are they going to have mm -hmm. compared to if I take this one, what opportunities are they going to have? Yeah. So it is, yeah, it is... Yeah. Thinking a little bit further, this is when uh, Crokinole turns into a little bit of a chess match. Yeah. It's more than trying. just making a legal shot. It's making a shot that is going to set the board up for you and thinking through not just, yeah, not just the legal available shots or the easiest or the the most, yeah. not profitable, what am I thinking? The most, like, the highest scoring shot, but yeah. the shot that is going to put you in the best position to to eventually win the game yep. so, and make it hardest, harder for the other player. Can I do a shameless plug Yeah. for the other videos that we're making? Yeah. Because here we're just trying to make up situations and trying to explain it without, like we don't have a 20 count, we don't know how many buttons yeah. are left, it's just totally made up. But when we're doing our other videos where we're talking through and coaching specific situations, yeah. that's when I'm able to say to you, you should shoot this one instead of that one, or you should shoot this angle instead of that yeah. one. And that's this is why, because here's our current situation. Yeah, and if you wanna go see that, like I said, we have those coaching session videos that were that. It was very forgiving. It was an actual game, but it was, was like, it? It, was, it was structured as an actual game, but I got to take lots of mulligans. I got to take multiple shots to try and get the shot that he was coaching me through, as long as we didn't change the state of the board with the shot. Mm. Um, and it was just, it was really helpful. But again, it's that looking at those real actual halfway through the game situations. And it was, I think those were really beneficial for me. I think they're really beneficial if you're in a place where you're trying to improve your crokinole skills. Hmm. So yeah, so this is board control. Again, we have a whole series of videos on getting better at crokinole. Um, anything else you want to say before we... Uh, I would also throw another disclaimer on there. If you if you talk to another top level player, I just mentioned Ray Beerling. Uh, there are other great players out there. There may be something that I said or an opinion that I have on strategy. They have a different opinion. Yeah. I'm not saying mine's the best. Haven't won the world championships yet. Um, I, yeah. I feel that my, yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean that it's on the goal sheet. Um, yeah, I, I feel like my strategy's strong, but I'm not, uh, I'm not. I'm not the crocodile god. So uh, yeah, I'm just, the, the purpose of this is just to encourage you to consider how to control the board to make sure you're not leaving your opponent any opportunity to get back into rounds. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. We'll direct it to Jeremy so he can give you the best possible answer. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. This is a ton of fun and I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you.